On this episode of Retro Car Guy 530, we're going to do an unboxing, setup and configuration, and some sample signals using a signal generator into this Autel MaxiScope MP408. I've been wanting to get an oscilloscope to help me diagnose certain electrical issues with cars, and I haven't had one for a really long time, so I'm basically a novice when it comes to automotive oscilloscopes. The one thing I wanted to get is uh, the inexpensive units, very cheap units, as far as price, uh, usually have 8-bit re vertical resolution. This unit that I ended up buying, the Autel MaxiScope MP408 in the basic kit, is one that has 12-bit vertical resolution, so it's a little bit better than some of the more inexpensive ones. It's a four-channel unit as well, so I'd like to have that capability in case a particular diagnostic requires it. And I simply can't afford a picoscope, so they're far too expensive for me at this point. Maybe as the channel grows, I'll be able to afford one of those and do a comparison between the MP408 and a picoscope. But right now, this seems to fit my financial requirements as far as being able to afford it. It has the four channel capability. So in this video, I'll go through an unboxing of it where I show you everything in the box. Again, I have the MP408 basic kit, and then I'll go through the initial download of the MaxiScope software for a Windows 10 PC, set that up on the PC, then run that to update the software and firmware on the unit. And then we'll go through, use the signal generator that I purchased recently and use that to generate some you know, sine waves and square waves and very, various other test signals that I can throw into it to so you can see those on the MaxiScope software. So let's start that. This is the unboxing of the Autel MaxiScope MP408 basic kit that I recently purchased with my own funds. The opinions expressed in this video are my own. Four channel automotive oscilloscope and it can be connected with a PC and I'm gonna be using a Windows 10 laptop to do that. It can also be connected to a variety of the higher end Autel MaxiSys tablets. I have a basic MS906 tablet which does not support it at all. It doesn't have a type A USB port, nor does the documentation state that the MaxiScope is supported. So make sure you check the documentation of your MaxiSys tablet to make sure the MaxiScope device is supported on that particular tablet. We have a picture of the top of the unit, what they're calling the rear view. You'll see a little bit later. I would call this the front view, but they're saying this is the rear view where the BNC connectors are for the various channels. And then down here we have statements of it working with all makes and models of modern vehicles compatible with LIN, CAN, and Flex, Flex Ray data bus standards. The MaxiScope app seems to be able to decode those. I may have to do a video later on with that as a test. Then the power for the unit is obtained through the USB cable. So when you plug the MaxiScope in to the PC or the tablet, the power is obtained from those devices. If you're running on battery power on those devices, make sure you have a full charge or better yet, make sure you have an AC power adapter plugged into them to maintain the power levels because your battery will drain quicker with this plugged into them. And then there are free software updates available through the internet. And that's firmware software updates that we'll be performing in this video. You'll download the MaxiScope application and in there is a section to check for updates and then download them and then install them into the device. So we'll have that in a little bit later in another section of the video. Here is the end, not much there other than there is a label with the serial number, that's why I've covered it up. And I have the bottom side of the box here and more statements about marketing speak about what it's capable of doing. And then of course, various features here. It does state the features, uh, color-coded four channel control panel. That's in the MaxiScope application, the cabling and unit itself don't have any color coding. So keep that in mind. I wish the, the cables did have that and some of the other manufacturer scopes do have that cap you know, right on there. So it'd be nice to add that to this one at some point. Then again, the top of the unit, what they're calling the front view where the USB type B connector connects to it. And then the rear view, I think these should be switched in my opinion, but uh, this is where the BNC connectors are at. And then the statement of which LEDs are up on the top end of the unit and then the notations for the channels for the BNC connectors that correspond to those. The main LED is the the LED breath light, number three here in the middle. It will be blinking green when the unit is connected to the PC or the tablet and communicating with it. So that's pretty much that. And again, freeze a, you know, pause the screen uh, in the video here to go through and look at all that if you'd like. Then we have the 
features or specifications. This is a 12-bit unit ver vertical resolution. One of the other reasons I purchased it, some of the lower or more inexpensive uh, scopes are only 8-bit. So this is a 12-bit unit. We'll see how good or bad it is. Um, that'll probably be in later videos. This is, again, just an unboxing and initial testing video. And the other thing, it does have a one-year warranty, although I've looked on the Autel site to see if I can try to register this device, and I didn't see an entry for the scope. So I'm not quite sure. You probably have to prove that with documentation of when you purchased it. So make sure you keep your documentation in case you have a warranty issue. And then on the other end, we have a statement of what's in this kit. And here we have the statement about the USB cable, the four test leads that are 10 feet in length or three meters in length. And again, no color coding to those. Secondary ignition pickup lead, in case you wanna do some ignition testing for coil, you know, spark plug testing and such, where you know, can see if there's a spark going through the cable. You have a two pin breakout lead, and I'll show you that in a little bit. There are two attenuators in here, in case you're testing the circuit. Uh, above 20 volts or so, and you want to go to 400 volts, there's a 20 to 1 attenuator in here. There's two of them. There's a large uh, crocodile clip set and a small crocodile clip set, which is actually wired to a test lead directly. A pin set, which is allowing you to pr back probe the circuit, and then some multimedia probe. Well, I'm sorry, multimeter probes. Say that correctly. So let's get into the box. Open this up this in full view. We have a quick reference sheet and PC software, which you can download from the Autel website. I did not find a CD or anything in here, so I would just go directly to the Autel website and download that. I'll show you that in a future segment in this video. And then once you get that installed, you can then perform the software updates to the uh, scope. And then for the, an Android app, there is an APK file that you can download and install and some additional specification statements. That's that. We have the MaxiScope itself. And again, the top view here, as we saw before, they're calling the front view with the USB type B connector. And then the rear view with the four B and C connectors for the channels, the channel markings here that correspond to those B and C connectors that uh, breath light here, the LED status light, which will be blinking green when it's communicating with the device it's connected to over USB. There's a rubberized case protector here. The, it's not too heavy, so uh, I wouldn't expect too many problems of placing this on a vehicle somewhere and it falling off just from the weight, although you need to make sure it's secure while you're using it. So that's the scope. And it looks like we have our two attenuators up here in front. These are Handtech attenuators, HT-201. They are 20 to one attenuators. Bring that up a little bit, see if you can see that a little better. So you would uh, plug this in and connect it to the scope. Get it installed there, and lock it in place. And then you'd connect your test lead here to go to the higher voltage, which I believe Somewhere in the 400 volt range is like the max with this in place. And there's two of those in the kit. So we have that. And there's nothing else there. And we have our USB cable. A type A, type B. This goes to the scope itself. This is not being friendly. There we go. And then we have the secondary ignition pickup lead, ground, clamp around the lead, and then the BNC connector, from, there we go. So that's for ignition testing. And it looks like we have two pockets here. And then this is the two pin breakout test lead. And it looks like these could connect together and maybe using this with some of my AES wave test leads out of the, my test kit might be useful, we'll, we'll see. And we have the four 10 foot or three meter leads here. They're all the same. There's no color difference like I mentioned before, I believe. 
and then you go the BNC to the scope, and then you have the positive and negative here, and there is a back end BNC, I'm sorry, a banana connector here that you can make this pass through, which is nice if that's uh, necessary for your particular testing needs. So those four of those, I'll be using one of those in a later section of the video when I do my initial test using a signal generator. And in the front here, we have the small alligator clip test lead. So this connects to the scope, of course, and then you have your small clips here. And the large alligator clips with the banana connectors on the end for those. Looks like we have our pin set here. It looks like one, two, five of the banana connector end to probe pins and then some freestanding pins for back probing into circuits. And then our multimeter test leads. Looks like they have some caps on that end and then the banana connector ends on that end. So with that, I'm going to take the USB cable and this scope connected to my Windows 10 laptop. I'm then going to update the firmware and software in the next section, and we'll see how that goes. I'm going to begin the installation of the MP408 on my Windows 10 laptop. First, I'm gonna download the setup EXE then we're gonna take this USB cable and connect the port on the back here to the USB on the computer. But first, let's go ahead and download that software from the Autel website. So now we're here on the autel.com website and under support, we're going to go to download, downloads. And then we can see that the MaxiScope MP408 is right here under Diagnostic Tools. So I'm gonna do a download here. Let's bring that window in view. And they have a unique name to each of these files. It doesn't necessarily correspond to the information um, relating to that particular device. So keep that in mind as you store these. And click save. And my browser has completed the download. So I'm going to open a window for that folder. And I am going to invoke my security scanning for this. There are no threats found. I'm going to drill into the zip file. I'm going to copy this file out. I'm going to paste it here. Right in the downloads folder. So we've got the program ready to go. So let's go ahead and connect the USB cable to the computer. So I've got the type A port. I'm gonna connect that into my USB hub here. And then we're going to connect the cable to the front end here. And power has been obtained. So we have the green light on the MP408. So I believe the next step here is to go ahead and run the setup EXE. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to tell it to run that since it's an unknown publisher. And let's go ahead and close down that window. And let's go ahead and close down the browser behind it. I'm going to select English. It's picking the directory where to be installed. It's ready to install. Let's click install.
It's asking to install a universal serial bus controller. So we need to do that. I'm now going to the Windows start menu here and under Autel, which we're seeing off screen here, unfortunately, uh, there is a Maxiscope program. So I'm gonna click on that. It's asking whether it can be run since it's from an unknown publisher. Clicking yes. And this is the main application. So I've, if I recall correctly, we have to go over to the Autel Maxiscope in that little uh, gear icon in the upper left-hand corner. That is the scope that I have. And click OK. Current software version does not match the hardware version. Please go to help and check for updates to update the hardware version. Go to help. Check for updates. Go online, it's looking for the latest software version. I guess I'm going to select it all. <laughs> Download. I guess you have to click updating. It says to disconnect the device and reconnect. All right, I'm disconnecting over at the laptop end. Reconnected. I'm now gonna click on okay. All right, it says step, status okay for both of those. I assume I can click on OK. So if we end up checking for updates again, let's go online. So since it's updated already, right, there's nothing to download. So now if I go to this and select that particular maxi scope. We should get this to change color to show that it's connected. And there we go. Here we have a small test going on of the maxi scope, the MP408. I have a signal generator sitting on the top of it here so I can hopefully overlay the maxi scope program to the left of it here. And on the maxi scope screen, you can see that I've started the program, but I haven't connected it because again, this is grayed out. So we need to either connect it by starting a sample or click on the auto setup. And there's the maxi scope that we have, the one and only. And now it's sampling and it's auto um, ranging. It looks like 200 millivolts on the channel A because we have that enabled and you can toggle the channels by clicking on these icons on the top. You can enable a trigger if you have a channel enabled um, by toggling here. You can then also zoom in and zoom out, restore to full zoom, change your sample size and the sample quantity, how, many, uh, how much time of data you're going to capture. There are 32 buffers here. We have the various channels and their settings. We have the trigger settings as well and we'll go through that in just a moment. But first off, I'm going to uh, connect the MaxiScope program to the MaxiScope, which I believe I've already done, right? Yes, I have. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn on channel A, and right now the signal generator is, looks like it's putting out a little bit of noise on the output from it, which is over here on the right. I have it connected to the cable going into channel A on the MaxiScope. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the sine wave and see what we get here. And there we go. I have the settings up here for the time unit to be one millisecond per division. So we have 10 milliseconds total here. And I can of course 
stop that and restart it. And if we adjust a couple parameters on the signal generator, we should have a little bit difference seen on the screen. And right now it's just showing you the raw sample. There's no trigger to hold the sample steady. And as you can see here, it's auto ranging. So I'm gonna fix this to, let's say 10 volts. And it's DC and the type of probe it's just a straight in probe. We're not multiplying or anything. We don't have a 20 to one attenuator plugged in. And then if there's like uh, amp clamps plugged in, so depending on the type of probe plugged into the channel, you would adjust this to the appropriate type. So we're just doing the raw voltage coming in. And I'm going to set a trigger. So I'm going to click on the parameters down here. So we have trigger of none at the moment. We're gonna set it to repeat, which means to constantly show the, or steady the sample in the window if the trigger occurs. And right now it's on the rise. You can have it on the rise of the voltage or the fall of the voltage. And I'm gonna put it on rise and let's put it at um, one volt. And I'm gonna click okay. And there's our trigger right here and showing that it is on the rise and the trigger is enabled. If I just toggle this off, it'll turn it off and then the sample will just continue to take the real-time info and refresh the screen. And now with the trigger enabled, it stabilizes on the last sample and we can see the sample counts here. And then if we pause this with a stop, we can then scroll through the various sample windows. We tell it to go again, it'll rebuild the buffer. And I can, I believe I can change some of this where you can see that I changed the sine wave characteristics and you can see that it's always on the rise part. So if we were to change the trigger, we can change this to be on the fall on the one volt. And we can see that it's now on the fall of that sine wave. So let's see, we can change the type of signal we're generating here. I'm gonna turn this off and I believe I can, you can change the frequency here also. So let's turn that back on. Okay, let's go through the different, let's go through a square wave. A little notchy there on the top corners, top left corners and bottom left corners. Or actually a smoother curve than I would expect to see there. All right, let's turn that off. And we can do triangle waves. We can change frequency. Okay. Sawtooth. And I believe the next one is reverse sawtooth. And then if you want to see an ECG uh, sample here. So let's go ahead and focus in on that. Let's, let's stop the sample. I'm going to zoom in on a chunk of it. I'm going to select the chunk there. It shows you the zoom overview here where you are in the sample. And then you can you know, zoom in further. And then you can restore it back to the, or undo the last zoom. And you can just have it zoom in, zoom in, zoom out. All right. And then you can of course scroll through the various windows, but since these are repeating patterns here, you wouldn't see much of a variation, but you can see that the buffer number out of 32 buffers is changing as I scroll through those. Let's see. Spectrum mode, okay, and digit mode, okay. So that is an example of using the MaxiScope program to examine the signal coming in. So I wanna make sure that it was actually functional 
And in the sense that the firmware update that we performed on it was capable of actually having it run correctly. It seems to be operating correctly. And then I wanted to give you a very, very quick overview of the different channel toggles here. You, how do you navigate through the sample size uh, data that you have? You can zoom in, zoom out. You can adjust your trigger settings over here, turn on and off the trigger. Since I turned off the trigger, it's refreshing the screen again. And then of course you have your parameter settings for the individual channels. So that's a very quick overview of the MaxiScope program with the MP408. Well, there you go. There's the unboxing of the Autel MaxiScope MP408. I went through the process of downloading the software from the Autel website, installing the MaxiScope software, then using the MaxiScope software to update the software and firmware on the device. Then we went through and used a signal generator to go through the very basic functionality of the MaxiScope software on the PC. So hopefully you found the video informative. Again, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. Make sure you hit the bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos like this to the channel. And check out the description section for any links. If there are affiliate links, I will make a commission, but at no extra charge to you. So check that out and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Three. Two, one. <laughs> I've been wanting to get it in a so I wanted to make sure I bought something that wasn't too expensive so that I could afford it and had some slightly better work. Three, two, one. On this episode of Retro Car Guy 530, I'm going to be review. Three, two, one. On this episode of Retro. On that. <laughs>